states like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. مسئله محور شرارت معین کردن ایران روابط ما رو به موقعیتی رساند که شاید بدتر از موقعیتی بود که در آغاز انقلاب به اوج دشمنی های ایران و آمریکا وجود داشت. Nine months later, the U.S. and Britain proposed a U.N. resolution that could authorize war against Iraq. The British Foreign Secretary, Jack Straw, toured the Middle East to seek support. Iran was a big cheese in the region, and it was important for me to see the Iranians, uh, to get them on board for what we were seeking to do with Saddam, which was to get rid of him. We cannot ignore the threat posed by Saddam Hussein to this region, to countries like Iran and Kuwait, to the Iraqi people themselves, and to the security of the region and the world. قبل از اون احساس دشمنی با صدام صدام دشمن ما بود بنابراین ما هم می‌خواستیم که صدام از بین بره صدام had invaded Iran 20 years earlier Iran had lost hundreds of thousands of young men President Hatami now made an unexpected offer Iran would provide America with intelligence and advice to help get rid of Saddam Hussein He said there had been an international arrangement in respect of Afghanistan in which they had participated and did, no one much noticed this uh, but it had worked pretty well گفتم بیایم تجربه افغانستان رو در مورد عراق را تکرار بکنیم من تا این دفعه شیش به علاوه شیش باشه شیش همسایه عراق به علاوه پنج عضو دائم شورای امنیت که آمریکا جزء اون است به علاوه مصر آینده عراق هم برای ایران بسیار مهم بود در همین چارچوبی که ما به افغانستان نگاه می‌کردیم به آینده عراق هم نگاه می‌کردیم این روح‌های زیادی در ایران بودن شخصیت‌های برجسته‌ای که می‌تونستان رهبران آینده عراق باشن آیا نمی‌شه به این ایران به عنوان نیرویی که می‌شود با اون مشکلات را حل کرد نگاه کنیم تا خود این را مشکل بدونیم I said you know this I, because I it wasn't directly in my gift uh, so I was cautious in response I could see the point he was making Allahu akbar Allahu Straw knew that Iran and Iraq, both Shia majority states, are closely intertwined. No state was better placed to provide the UK and the US with intelligence in Iraq. But would President Bush accept help from one of his axes of evil? That was, of course, the $64,000 question. The crucial thing was to try it on uh, Colin Powell, I called him. But the State Department had a problem, the White House. Secretary Powell and I wanted to push the uh, possibility as far as the, or, you know, as, as the traffic would bear, but we realized that there were some real practical limitations that the President was going to put on this. Colin was sympathetic, but he came back to me and said that he didn't think it was a runner. So as the American-led coalition crushed Saddam Hussein, Iran watched from the sidelines. Iran now faced American forces of a quarter of a million men on its Afghan border to the east and in Iraq to the west. And a president who believed in preemptive war. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. غروری که احساس میشد که ابرقدرت برتر دنیا هر کاری که بخواد میتونه انجام بده. 
The next day, an unprecedented proposal to mend Iran's shattered relationship with the West landed on a desk in the State Department. The Swiss ambassador, who represented US interests in Iran, had sent a fax. It starts out about with his meeting with Sadek Harzi. And I thought, hmm, this is a little bit different. Sadek Harazi, here on the right with President Hatami, was a key player in Iran. He was the foreign minister's nephew, an in-law of the supreme leader, and he'd been meeting the Swiss ambassador. The readout says that he's had these talks with Sadek Harazi, and Sadek Harazi has developed a roadmap for the normalization of US-Iranian relations. The roadmap suggested direct talks between Iran and America. Everything was on the table. Iran's wish list, America would refrain from supporting regime change and abolish all sanctions on Iran. And America's wish list, Iran would make Hezbollah into a peaceful political party and would accept the two-state Palestinian-Israeli peace process. That proposal had a number of elements which were of importance to Iran. That is, it had the element of mutual respect which has been lacking in, in U.S. approach to Iran. The covering letter said that Harazi had two long discussions with the Supreme Leader and that President Hatami and his uncle, the Foreign Minister, were also present. All previous contact between the US and Iran had been limited to single issues. Now it seemed the Supreme Leader had agreed with 85 to 90 percent of this ambitious paper. I read it. I think it's incredibly significant and groundbreaking. And I write the memo for Secretary Powell that would be from my boss at the time, Richard Haas. I thought the paper was, was interesting, uh, but I was skeptical. The biggest problem in dealing with Iran at that point was uncertainty about whether the government really spoke for the government uh, or whether the government really spoke for, you know, for the power centers uh, uh, of the country. If the Iranians authorized it to be transmitted to the U.S. as the basis of talks, we should do it. I don't care whether they, they contracted it out to a great speechwriter. They authorized its transmission and we should call them on it. Washington said no. The decision wasn't made by hardline associates of the president. It was made at the top of the State Department. Even uh, in response to a proposal uh, that was basically a genuine attempt to resolve all issues of concern to either side, the United States simply decided to neglect it and put it aside. America's snub left diplomacy with Iran in European hands. Britain's foreign secretary flew to Tehran. President Hatami still needed to convince the West that the rest of Iran's leadership supported his moderate policies. I said to him that it didn't help that when they paraded their Shahab missiles on their National Military Day in Tehran, that the legend written on these missiles in English was death to the Americans. Hatami came straight back at me, uh, smiled, and said, yeah, but that's some relief to me, because they used to write, death to Hatami. And it was a very poignant moment, really, uh, bringing out, uh, in a sense, his openness about the way in which he was continually being undermined by the conservative forces in Iran. Straw then said that the West was worried about Iran's investment in nuclear technology. <laughs> But Iran's military doesn't answer to the president alone. The supreme leader has the final say. Iran already had an ambitious program in ballistic missiles that could carry nuclear warheads and Iran was building its first civil nuclear power station. Earlier in the year, inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, had confirmed the existence of this secret facility. Proof that Iran was also trying to master the secrets of enriching uranium, technology that could be used to make fuel or a bomb. Enrichment was the most difficult part of developing a nuclear weapon. It was 
maybe two-thirds, maybe three-quarters of the challenge. It wasn't actually producing the bomb, it was producing the highly enriched uranium that had to go into the bomb. And so if the Iranians could master enrichment, they would be three-quarters of the way to producing a nuclear weapon.